firsthand. A man is in custody tonight while another remains in the hospital after being shot in the chest twice. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Krista Bame. A 23-year-old is behind bars after what started as a fight in front of a rural Pennington County home. Trevor Brown was arrested in Goodridge, Minnesota for shooting another person in the chest. Those who called 911 say several people pulled up in a car in front of the home around 2.30 this morning and a fight began. That's when Brown pulled out a gun and fired. The victim is believed to be in stable condition, but deputies are not releasing any further details. You can follow any updates on this story and many others on our Facebook page. Just search Valley News Live, like our page, and you'll stay informed throughout the whole day. Minnesota lawmakers and top officials will meet tomorrow to start figuring out how to fix the state's sex offender program. A judge ruled in June that it's unconstitutional because it essentially keeps offenders behind bars with no way to complete a treatment program and be released. Hundreds of sex offenders in the program filed a class action lawsuit against the state. The fix will likely cost taxpayers tens of millions of dollars and will result, result in the eventual release of some of the more than 700 offenders. The hearing set for tomorrow will not be open to the public. Roads were jammed with RVs, trailers and cars heading home from Detroit Lakes after one of the largest country music festivals. We Fest hit a high note, drawing in more than 50,000 people each day of the three-day event, which created a traffic backup for more than an hour for some. Valley News Team's Macy Anger talked with one couple who's glad the long weekend is a wrap. Lynn Anderson and her husband moved here 34 years ago. And we had no idea that this was going to take place. Their home now sits right across from We Fest. We thought, well, we might as well join the crowd. 30 campers packed up their trailers, leaving this exclusive spot after spending the long weekend here. We love visiting with Lynn and her family, and they've kind of taken us as part of their family. A lot of the people tell us that they wouldn't come to Wee Fest if they couldn't camp here. And I don't blame them. <laughs> you know, it's a little rowdy in the other campgrounds. Sioux Pass Ranch hosts 10 separate campgrounds, according to the website. There's a total capacity of 35,000 people. This year, 30,000 people came out. Camping was really good, um, except that we had no electricity. <laughs> and it, it rained a lot. Anderson says in their backyard, they haven't had any problems with campers. But she does say Sunday is her favorite day of this week. It's like a big family reunion. And once we... Um, see everybody and what have you. It, it's it's nice to see them go to. <laughs> In Detroit Lakes, Macy Inger, Valley News Live. The Becker County Jail says about 70 arrests were made in the county from Wednesday to this morning. Officials say compared to years past, that's a standard number for the week. And 10 at 10 continues with the Navy planning to station armed guards at all 70 of its reserve centers that are not located on military bases. This comes more than three weeks after a gunman opened fire in Chattanooga, Tennessee, killing four Marines and a sailor at a reserve center after first shooting into a recruitment office. The Navy is also considering providing protection at its recruitment centers. Since the shootings in Chattanooga, armed civilians have been guarding recruiting centers across the country. And a tragedy tonight near Houston, Texas. Six children and two adults were shot and killed inside a home apparently stemming from a failed relationship. David Conley is charged with three counts of capital murder after deputies responding to a welfare check found the bodies last night. He told investigators a woman in the home changed the locks after he moved out, so he entered through an unlocked window. Most of the victims were bound with metal handcuffs and all were in bedrooms. The oldest child victim is believed to be his. A Henning man is injured after falling out of a moving pickup. 40-year-old David Spanswick was standing up in the back of a pickup on Highway 108, just north of Henning, around 2 this morning, when he lost his balance and fell onto the road. The Ottertail County Sheriff's Department says all the spots in the pickup were full, which is why he was riding in the back. Spanswick suffered from severe road rash and a hip injury. He was taken to a hospital in Wadena. 
Hikers are reminded to be on high alert after one from Montana was killed by a grizzly bear in Yellowstone National Park. A ranger found his body, and although there is not an exact cause of death, investigators identified what appeared to be defensive wounds on the man's arms. The National Park Service says the victim was found partially consumed at the Elephant Black Loop Trail near Lake Village on Friday, which is now closed. Track showed that an adult female grizzly and at least one cub were present. Wildlife biologists have set traps in the area and bears will be euthanized if they are determined to have been involved. And the National Park Service wants to remind hikers to stay on designated trails, travel in groups of at least three, carry bear spray, be alert, and make noise to help avoid surprise encounters. Today marks the 70th anniversary of the dropping of an atomic bomb on the Japanese city of Nagasaki by U.S. forces, the second and last to be dropped as an act of war. More than 200,000 people are estimated to have been killed by the two atomic bombs dropped over Japan during the Pacific War. The first bomb was dropped three days earlier. North Dakota native and World War II veteran Thomas Bogan remembers the day while in boot camp. He says he served in the Navy after the war was declared over. During his service, his ship occupied Japan, docking in several different harbors. While there, he visited Nagasaki. I became friends with this photographer, and uh, we went over on one occasion just as a, more or less as a tourist over to the Hiroshima, and he took some pictures and so on of the but really, there wasn't a lot to see. It was just one big mass of uh, destruction is really what, what there was to see. World War II came to an end six days after the bombing of Nagasaki. And as you prepare for the school year, you're probably looking to find the best deals, and couponing is a common way to do it. Grocery stores like Hornbacher's, Family Fair, and Cashwise encourage customers to use their apps to save more. Valley News Team's Christine Stanwood talked to customers in Target who are choosing to put down the scissors and pick up their phones as they shop. The Kading family was out on their Sunday Target run when I noticed they had their phone out. It gives you like discounts instead of having to carry around paper coupons. The Cartwheel app allows Timothy to buy Lunchables at a discount. Two for five dollars. I got three Lunchables. I got a pizza one, a sandwich one, and a nacho one. Grandma Kading says paper is a thing of the past. I used to spend a lot of time cutting them out and organizing them. Even had a notebook. Now I don't do any of that. Target's newest feature on the Cartwheel app uses beacon technology that uses your phone's Bluetooth. This allows you to find deals based on what aisle you're in rather than scrolling through the app. That's the Cartwheel app. The addition is still in the early stages, so in the meantime, Timothy can find his last indulgence. I'm hoping to find pomegranate seeds. In Fargo, Christine Stanwood, Valley News Live. The Beacon technology from Target is being tested in more than 15 stores in the Twin Cities. Coming up tonight, another change for Target on gender labels.